signs of a struggle. Porch light was broken. Disappearance of the three women. The unsolved disappearance known as the Springfield Three unfolded on June 7, 1992. On that fateful day, friends Suzanne Streeter and Stacy McCall, along with Streeter's mother, Cheryl Levitt, mysteriously vanished from Levitt's residence in Springfield. Strikingly, all their personal possessions, including vehicles and handbags, were left untouched. The absence of any signs of a struggle perplexed investigators, although a broken porch light globe was noted. Additionally, a message on the answering machine, deemed potentially significant, was unintentionally erased, leaving behind a void in the quest for clues. Welcome to the place where you'll find your perfect accommodation. If you're the owner of a hotel, motel, or a similar establishment, don't hesitate to reach out for a potential collaboration. In 1997, Robert Craig Cox, convicted kidnapper and robber, claimed that women are murdered and insisted that their bodies would never be found. To date, neither the location of the women nor their remains has been ascertained. It's important to note that investigators involved in the case dismiss Cox's claims, casting doubt on the credibility of his statements. At the time of her disappearance, Cheryl Elizabeth Levitt was 47 years old. She stood at 1.52 meters and weighed 50 kilograms. Cheryl had short, light blonde hair, brown eyes, and pierced ears. Professionally, she worked as a cosmetologist at a local salon and was a single mother known to be very close to her daughter, Suzanne Elizabeth Streeter. Susie, who was 19 years old, measured 1.57 meters and weighed 46 kilograms. She had blonde hair, brown eyes, and distinctive features including a scar on her upper right forearm, a small mole on the left corner of her mouth, and pierced ears. Stacy Kathleen McCall, 18 years old, stood at 1.60 meters and weighed 54 kilograms. She had long, dark blonde hair and light-colored eyes. On June 6, 1992, Streeter and McCall officially graduated from Kickapoo High School. Their last known sighting was around 2 a.m. on June 7, as they left the final graduation party they had attended that night. There were reported sightings of them in Battlefield at some point during the night. Originally intending to spend the night at their friend Janelle Kirby's house, they changed plans when they found it too crowded. Instead, they headed to Streeter's residence at 1717 East Del Mar Street to call it a night. While it is presumed they arrived, the presence of their clothing, jewelry, purses, and vehicles at the house the next day supports this assumption. The last known communication from Levitt occurred at approximately 11.15 p.m. on June 6 when she discussed painting an armoire with a friend over the phone. The next day, at approximately 9 a.m., Kirby and her boyfriend decided to check on the house when Streeter and McCall didn't show up at Kirby's place. The plan for the day was to enjoy a visit to a water park, departing from Kirby's residence. Upon their arrival, Kirby noticed the front door of the house was unlocked. Upon entering, she discovered that Streeter, McCall, and Levitt were nowhere to be found, despite each of the women's cars being parked outside. Kirby also informed the police that the glass lamp shade on the porch light was broken, although the light bulb itself remained intact. Kirby's boyfriend unintentionally helped her clear the broken glass from the porch, a move later recognized by the police as potentially compromising evidence. Inside the house, Kirby encountered Levitt and Streeter's dog, a Yorkshire Terrier named Cinnamon, who appeared agitated. During her time inside, Kirby also received a troubling call from an unidentified male making sexual innuendos. After hanging up, she promptly received another call of a similar nature, prompting her to hang up once again. Several hours later, Janice, McCall's mother, arrived at the house when her daughter didn't respond to her calls. Upon entering, she observed all three women's purses neatly arranged on the living room floor, and noticed her daughter's clothing folded from the previous night. Levitt and Streeter's cigarettes were also found within the house. Concerned, Janice urgently contacted the police from the home's telephone to report the disappearance of the three women. While making the call, she checked the answering machine and came across a strange message, but unfortunately, it got accidentally erased from the tape. The police expressed significant interest in the call, believing it may have contained a clue, and they did not link it to the prank calls that Kirby had received. McCall's parents reached out to the police over 16 hours after their daughter, along with Streeter and Levitt, 
was last seen at Levitt's residence. Concerned friends and family members also called and visited the house the following day. Police later approximated that the crime scene had been compromised by 10 to 20 individuals who had visited Levitt's home. When the officers arrived, the scene displayed no indications of a struggle, except for the broken porch light. Additionally, the police observed that Levitt's bed had been used. All personal belongings, including purses, money, cars, keys, cigarettes, and even the family dog, were left behind. On December 31, 1992, an individual contacted the America's Most Wanted hotline with crucial information about the women's disappearances. Unfortunately, the call got disconnected when the switchboard operator tried to connect with Springfield investigators. Law enforcement stated that the caller possessed knowledge of the abductions and made a plea for the individual to get in touch but no communication ensued. Levitt and Streeter were officially declared legally deceased in 1997. Nevertheless, their case files are officially categorized under missing. Investigators received a tip suggesting that the women's remains might be buried in the foundations of the South Parking Garage at Cox Hospital. In 2007, reporter Cathy Baird enlisted the help of Rick Norland, engineer, to conduct a ground-penetrating radar scan on a section of the parking garage. Norland identified three anomalies, which he deemed consistent with a grave site location, two of these anomalies were parallel, and the third was perpendicular. Lisa Cox, the spokesperson for the Springfield Police Department, noted that the individual who provided the tip offered no evidence or logical reasoning. She also emphasized that construction on the parking garage commenced in September 1993, more than a year after the women's disappearances. Cox stated, excavating the area and reconstructing would be expensive, and without any reasonable belief that the bodies could be located here. For these reasons, SPD does not intend to pursue this lead, as investigators have deemed it not credible. Daryl Moore, a former assistant, remarked that the tip originated from someone who either claimed to be a psychic or asserted to have had a dream about the case. Dustin Reckla, Susie's ex-boyfriend, gained attention from the police due to his involvement in a Springfield mausoleum break-in. During the incident, he stole $30 worth of gold fillings from a skull. The connection arose as Streeter had provided investigators with a statement about the break-in, raising the possibility that she could be a potential witness. Notably, Rekla and his two associates, who were accomplices in the robbery, were known to be together and in the vicinity on the night the women went missing. In 1997, Robert Craig Cox, serving time in prison for kidnapping and robbery, claimed their bodies had been buried with no chance of recovery. In 1992, he stated to investigators that he was at church with his girlfriend the morning after the women went missing, and she corroborated his alibi. However, she later recanted, revealing that Cox had coerced her into making that statement. Additionally, Cox claimed he was at his parents' home the night of the disappearance, and they verified his alibi. Authorities were uncertain whether Cox was involved in the case or if he sought acknowledgement for alleged murders by making false statements. Cox conveyed to authorities and journalists that he would reveal the details of what happened to the three women after his mother's passing. The case remains unresolved, despite the receipt of over 5,000 tips from the public. In June 1997, a bench was dedicated to the women in Springfield's Phelps Grove Park Victims Memorial Garden. The case has garnered attention on various television shows, including 48 Hours and America's Most Wanted. Investigation Discovery featured the Springfield 3 on its disappeared TV series in the past. In 2019, the same channel's People magazine investigates aired a tabloid-style episode titled The Springfield 3. Notably, in 2021, journalist and Roderick Jones introduced The Springfield 3, a small-town disappearance podcast.